Hi, this is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. We have an amazing, amazing opportunity every time that people, people are gathering together to one place with, with good intentions to, to aim their hearts for a divine cause, for for the godly purpose of our creation. Very special, and very powerful things are happening. Even when we don't know and even when we don't understand the greatness and the holiness of our actions, the Creator is using our souls to bring down his light to the world when we are aware to it and when we don't. Many times the Creator is using us even to save lives of people, to rescue people from very awkward and dangerous situations. And the Creator Himself, He knows exactly which words and which thoughts to put in our minds, in our mouths. And we're just talking without knowing what we're saying and we're literally saving lives of other people. Sometimes also the evil inclination, the Yetzara, might use our tools, might use our bodies, might use our mouths to pile difficulties on other people. This is why we need to watch our mouths, never to be negative, never to say bad things, not to talk Lashonara, but the main focus of us always supposed to be on the positive side to understand that really from heaven the Creator is willing to use us to complete His mission and to bring us all to that wonderful day of redemption. There is an amazing story that has been told by that huge righteous man, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. And he said that there was a king that wanted to conquer a certain city. But that city was surrounded with very thick walls and soldiers were protecting that city. So he came with his special forces, with his soldiers, and they start fighting, shooting on the wall, trying to break into the gate, and nothing moved. And one unit after the next died on that wall. Thousands of soldiers, he lost that poor king in his battle, in his war to conquer that town, that city. When he realized that he lost all of his special forces, his special, most powerful soldiers, he went back to his hometown gathered the rest of his army and went back to fight again. It was an important war, important mission. And they went and died on that wall. Thousands and thousands of soldiers died on that wall. And the king is losing more troopers, more soldiers, more units, more units. Thousands of people are dying. And he knows that he must take over that city. He knows that the importance of that mission the king, he knows exactly what is worthy to fight for and what is not. In the end, the king found himself in such a weak situation that all of his soldiers, he lost all his army and he still wanted to conquer and overpower and those evil people in that town. He wanted to break that wall and to take over that town. And with his wisdom, he looked and he realized that even though that he lost thousands on thousands of, 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 of warriors, of soldiers, they really damaged through their effort. And in that war, the wall in a way that can be break. And even though that the loss was so painful and so horrible, still there was a chance to to win that war. So he went back again to his hometown and took the women 
and the children and the elders and he took all the people from his hometown and told them it's the time for us to fight and they came with stones with sticks with their bare hands and they just carved their way into that town and because of those years of effort and thousands of soldiers that fought in that war by the effort the tears the blood the sorrow the gifts that they received in early generations, in early years, they made that way possible. And the women and children and the elder, the weak ones of their people won that war, went into that town and overpowered and conquered that town, that city, that place. That tale is coming to tell us that all of our ancestors the righteous ones, the Tanaim, the Amoraim, in the earliest generations, all those giants, the Baal Shem Tov and his students, all the Admorim, and all the holy communities around the world, in all the lands, all those giants, all those angels, by their merit, we will defeat the enemy, even though that we are weak even though that we're not as righteous as they were in earlier generations, even though that when we're looking at ourselves, we see ourselves broken and weak and torn, burnt and broken, poor, poor from wisdom. But the Creator can see that even though that we are so weak, it's in our power to overpower, to conquer the evil inclinations kingship and to win that war. And we're not supposed to look at ourselves and to judge ourselves because we don't know who we are and we don't understand our real greatness and why the Creator sent us to this last generation. Think about it. When you want to send a soldier to the depths of the war, to the lowest, to the most dangerous place in the world. Who are you going to send? The strongest one or the weakest one? The strongest one. But when he will come back from the war, after winning that war, will he wear his first class most clean and, 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 and best suit? He will be clean and, and, and his hair will be right and everything will be perfect? No. How he going to look? He's going to look so awful, so horrible. He will be wounded. He will be scarred. His face won't be clean and he won't be happy. He will be so, so, so poor. His uniform will be torn and, 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 and mud and, and, and blood will be on, on his hands and on his legs. And you will see the scars of the war on his shape, on his figure. Look at yourself right now. We are standing right now in the hardest place of them all, in the lowest place that human race reached ever. We are under 50 gates of Tum'ah of impurity, in the most impure place that our history knew ever. We are struggling with difficulties and with challenges that no generation before dealt with sickness of the mind, sadness, depression, anxieties, facing challenges and, and, and distractions with all the mobiles and the phone and internet and TV <coughs> and news all over the place and people are talking and flying and airplanes and cars and vehicles and everything is moving so fast and so crazy and you cannot catch up. You cannot hold on in the speed of this roller coaster, of this craziness that is going on outside like a hurricane, like a storm. And we are poor and empty and dry and broken and sad and depressed and scared and lost and confused. But we must strengthen ourselves with the private and individual supervision of the Creator on each and every single one of us. And he sent us to this mission, to that war, with a purpose, while knowing our talents and our abilities, our power, and the treasures that He treasured inside of us. Because He gave us the tools to deal with that mission. 
He gave us the power, the energy, the patience, all the tools and talents to solve the mystery of this world of lie, to achieve completion in our mission and to overpower the evil inclination and to win that war completely. But if you're judging yourself by your uniform, your suit, the condition of your weapon, how clean you are, how many showers you took in the last month, you won't make it, you won't succeed. Because you need now to focus and to put all the power of your mind in the purpose of winning that war and not backing off no matter what you see. You lose a finger, you lose a hand, you lose a friend, you lose a wife, you lose a child, you lose your mind. You're not backing off. You're not giving up. Because the mission is never to back off and never to give up. No matter what you see with your eyes. How many people are shooting at you from the sides? How many troopers, how many heathen soldiers are attacking you? How many vehicles of the enemy? How many power you see? You don't know how close you are to complete redemption. You don't have a clue how close we are to the complete salvation of the wide world. How powerful we are. How amazing we are. How long was the distance of that route that we took. How many years were already holding on in that mission to reveal the godliness of the Almighty, the amazing Creator in the world from one generation to the next and we're not backing off. And we're passing that holy torch from one generation to the next. Ignoring holocausts and decrees and sorrow and poverty and plagues and bloodshed, ignoring all difficulties and just moving forward one step after the next, another effort, another tear, another chapter of Tehillim, another morning that you're able to wake up and say one word to Hashem, to say Shema, to say Kiyat Shema before you go to sleep, to say one blessing, to wash your hands once a day, to do even the minimum that considered the minimum, just to survive. The Zohar HaKadosh that had been written by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and his friends is asking a huge question. The Zohar is asking, Who is that person that wins the war? And the Zohar is answering, It's that one that holds his weapon in his hand. Sounds great. He holds the weapon, probably he won. That was the answer of that, for that question by the Zohar Kadosh. But the Zohar Kadosh cannot accept that answer. The Zohar Kadosh is asking again, if you're telling me that that guy still holds his weapon in his hand, it means that he has some enemies around him. He didn't conquer no war. A person that won completely puts the sword aside. He doesn't need to fight no more. He doesn't have no more enemies. He finished. That's it. The Tsar is answering, the war never ends. And as long as you hold your weapon in your hand, it means that you're winning. And you're winning and winning and you're fighting. And you're killing and you're slaughtering thousands on thousands of demons and ghosts and dark figures that are coming to attack us. Negative thoughts of the evil inclination that impure our minds with sadness with despair. But the truth, the real truth is that there is no despair in the world at all. That from every situation you can rise and you can climb and you can grow. Just you need to put your mind into the real mission of your life to make another step toward the truth. To be a person of honesty, of dignity, to be kind, to be good, to reveal the good in the world, to let people know that the Creator loves them in unconditional love and that they cannot judge themselves based on their physicality, on how clean their uniform is, how wealthy they are, how much money they have in their banks. It doesn't mean anything in reality. 
Tov Shem Mishem Tov. It's better that the person will have a real good name from the best, most quality, most precious oil in his containers. The person's purpose is to be a person of truth, always to walk forward, to try to become as similar as he can to the Creator himself, to learn a good example from the real righteous ones, not from all the famous ones that are going wild outside today, trying to make money out of the souls of poor, poor people, poor students around us growing on our backs like leeches, like animals climbing on us, trying to destroy our souls for their own benefit and pleasure of the fake respect, fake, fake honor that they're demanding from their students, from simple flock of our nation, from the innocent souls of our people. We're holy people with pure intentions and holy souls and we must strengthen our friends, Ishet Re'eu Ya'azoru, to help each other, to help our friends, Ve'lachiv Yomar Chazak, and give good words of Chizuk, strengthen your friends to your brothers, recognize in the face of your brother that he's your brother. Wake him up, give him some comfort, words of strengthening, words of hope, tell him you care about him. Give him a reason to wake up in the morning. Tell him, I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you. And give one minute of your time to pray. Give two minutes of your day to pray for your friends, to your beloved ones, to people that needs your help, that needs your support, that needs your heart like oxygen, like cold water to a tired soul. One compliment, one good word. Judge people favorably. Give a chance for life. Shine your face. Smile to people. Give a little bit from your time, a little bit from your money, a little bit from your, your wisdom, from your talents, from your ability, from your knowledge, from your life experience and share it. We receive that wonderful, so amazing gift in the world today. People are so scared from internet, terrified from mobiles. You must have a kosher phone. I saved lives of thousands on thousands of people with that cursed device. You can curse it as long as you want. I saved lives of thousands of people until today with that beaten apple. Because the Creator gives those tools to us with a purpose, with a cause. With the same knife that a person can slaughter someone, can stab him in the back, you can save the life and protect your family. And with the same knife you can slice an apple and slice the bread for Shabbat. It's the same knife. What that matters, what that is important is the intention of that slaughterer. If he's a ritual slaughterer, if he's a holy person that uses the knife in purity, or if he is an awful, horrible, selfish, racist human being, worse than an animal that allows himself to destroy and humiliate and ruin other people's good life. And it's our job not only to be kind and nice, our job is also to defend our tribe and to protect our people and to fight for the poor and to protect women and children and weak people and people that are poor in their mind and in their knowledge. And we must fight for our people and not only for our nation, for the wide world we need to fight. We need to fight for the animals, for the nature. We need to fight for every person, for everyone that doesn't have a voice. For everyone that cannot scream for himself, that doesn't know how to express his emotions, that doesn't know how to talk. We need to fight for fish that are swimming in the sea, for the dolphins. We need to fight for humanity. We need to fight for the good. We need to do good with no end. 
We need to uncover our true potential of being a holy nation of servants of the Creator that are revealing His godliness in the world with no end. And not because that we're commanded on it. Just because that it's the truth that we will fight for the good and that we will defend holy and pure souls from evil inclination, from bad people that are taking advantage of the weak. We're not allowed to let those wrong, evil things happen in our areas. In every place that your eyes can reach, you need to make sure that that area, that that place will be holy, will be kept in purity and in good and positive attitude, that people will shine, that people will be allowed to talk, to think, to express themselves, not to depress no one, not to destroy souls of our people, always to stand for those innocent ones, to protect them with our own bodies, with our own souls, to fight for every individual like it's the final war, like that's the only mission that you have in life, to protect your neighbor, to protect your friend, your soulmate, your children, your beloved ones. And as long as you're fighting for other people, you should also remember to protect yourself. We're sacrificing ourselves with a purpose. We're not giving ourselves to be fed to other people, to bad will of selfish people that are taking advantage of us. We are soldiers, we're warriors, we're fighting for the truth. We need to make sure that all of the army and all of the troopers and all of those ones that have pure intentions will survive. And if you need to make sure that you will stay alive for that, you need to fight for your own life as well. You need to protect yourself, you need to protect your house, you need to protect your family. You need to be a person of truth and not to surrender to the lie in no way, in no aspect. It's a prohibition from the Bible that is telling us, Lota ish. You're not allowed to be afraid of no one, not allowed to be scared from people, no matter who those people are. They're soldiers, they're wealthy, they're the boss, they're the I don't know who, they're the no. rabbi, who, what? Your mother-in-law. Is Your mother-in-law. It's pretty scary. And when you're a mother-in-law and a father-in-law, your children are not allowed to be scared from you as well. So just prepare your vessels. Not allowed to be scared of no one and not allowed to terrorize no one. We're not allowed to be scared of people, only to have pure fear from heaven, from the Almighty. Only simple faith from the crea in the Creator. Only an understanding that we need to go and do good in the world and to reveal His loving kindness, His endless love on all of His children, on all of His creations. And it's our job to reveal that good in the world and never to go back. And when we will finally connect ourselves to that pure source of energy, to the real energy that is installed inside of us, that we will become those holy souls that we are, that we will express that godliness that is treasured inside of us by being good, by being generous, by being kind, being loyal and truthful, strong enough to admit the truth, to apologize if we hurt someone, to ask for forgiveness if we hurt the emotions of a person, if we rebuked someone in public, if we insult someone, to have the ability and the power to go and to ask for forgiveness. When we will reveal godliness in that way, that we will be pure and innocent and not selfish and self-centered, in that moment we will find out who we really are and what are the real qualities and powers of our spirit. We will understand how many wonders and miracles and salvation we can bring down to this world. 
how many people we can heal, how many souls we can revive, how many people we can guide and give them strength and power and to bring the res resurrection of the dead to the present, to today. That souls that are dead will wake up from the dead. That people that drowned in black bitterness, in awful depression will be happy, glad and satisfied completely from their lives. They will find good advice in our words. They will see hope in our eyes. They will wake up back to life from their sadness, from their inner darkness, from their despair. But for that we must work on ourselves to realize that there is no despair in the world at all. First of all, we're not allowed to back off, to give up. We're not allowed to surrender to our fears, to the pressure that this world is pressuring us. To know that there is always hope because we are being guided by the Almighty. And He's got the power to bring redemption, to cross the sea to half. To pass and bring, deliver our people in dry land in the middle of the sea. He can bring the clouds to surround us, to protect us, that even gun bullets won't hit us. That the clothing of our children will grow on their bodies for years, for 40 years in the desert. Our clothing were cleaning itself by themselves in the cloud. The wonders and miracles that are in the hand of the Creator are above the nature, above the power of physicality. We cannot understand how elastic this world is, how many wonders and things that we cannot imagine can happen and take place in our own lives. Then you can eat, that you can eat food that is the food of angels, that the Torah describes as thin crust of, of, of clear ice. Something that you cannot see with your eyes, that is clear, and you can feel the taste of every food. And you can enjoy from it in a spiritual way, eating it with no waste, with no filth. Only purity is getting inside, only pure energy, recharging your batteries with spiritual food. The Creator is able to make wonders to bring out water from a boulder, from a stone, can change the weather, can hold the sun in the sky can give you power to fly like King David and the Levites were flying, like Aaron was flying. Like righteous ones got abilities that we cannot understand. Because of what? They were unique, what? They were different than us, different species, they were aliens, what were they? No, they were just like us. But they went all the way with their true potential and they reached the truth that they are creations of the Creator, that His name is the Creator of the world, Borei Olam, and He creates the world in the present, in real time. Now He can create the world as He wish, as He wants. And if He wants you to fly, He'll give you the ability to fly. When He wants you to fly and He wants you to see that you can fly, He will show it to you. 200 years ago, was it possible for a person to go on an airplane and fly from the U.S. to Israel to be there in 11 and a half hours? Business class, was it an option that you will call your mother on your mobile and speak to her when she's in the other side of the world? Was it an option? It wasn't an option. The Creator made it possible. It's a wonder above nature that your voice will go from one side of the world in real time, in the same moment, faster than the speed of the voice. You're talking here and He hears you in the other side of the world in no time. How can it be? Only if the Creator will pass your voice to that place, it can take place. The Creator took His spiritual power and His miracles and wonders and hid them in physicality, in plastics, in mobile devices. And now it's hidden in particles of, of, of 
of, 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 of iron, of metal, of technology. And for you now it's okay. No, I have it's a new, it's a brand, it's a phone, it's a car, it's a plane. No. It's all a shame. It's all a shame. It's all the power of the Creator that is being revealed and also hidden in the same time in His creation. You can send emails, you can talk to Google and, it, and, and it, Google Translator, it will, it will translate your words, gonna write them down. What are those things? Screenshot your emails and sending messages from one person to the other, to groups, thousands of people in one moment, email blast, thousands of people receiving new content, videos. I spoke already online thousands of times more than the time that I will live. I already spoke millions of hours of Torah. How, how can it be? In the same time, thousands of people can watch me and I'm talking to every individual. It's not under nature. It's not in the rules of nature. Those things cannot happen. I can give a speech in front of 20 people, 30 people will sit in the class. I'm finishing the class, I'm watching the, 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 the number of views. Facebook Live, 2,000 people, 3,000 people, 1,000 people. Where were they? Realize in reality you were speaking to two and three thousand people. So of course if I would be a beautiful woman that, go, go, woman that goes and speaks about Sephora, a new branch, I would have 300 million views on the spot. You're right. But still, that potential is also waiting and, and avail, available for us to enjoy from. It will come when the real grace of the Torah will be revealed when the real beauty of faith will be revealed in the world and people will throw away their idols of money and fake false beauty they will start chasing and running after Hashem then millions on millions hundreds of millions of followers you'll have on every inspi ins inspiring talk on every word of Torah on every fantastic class that reveals godliness in the world. Thousands on thousands, millions of people will follow Hashem. That is our redemption. This is our salvation. Seven years ago I was talking to seven people in class and we reached 21 views on YouTube. And today we're reaching close to 100,000 people a month on all such social media outlets. And the truth is that we even don't really know the numbers because for an example on WhatsApp you don't have no track on that. And people are WhatsApping and WhatsApping and WhatsApping and you don't have a clue where that message goes. How many lives you're saving. How many people you're saving. Yesterday, I said it in class, I went with my wife to the dentist. The dentist asked my wife if she wants to see something on the screen. They, they put YouTube and whatever for people to focus on that instead of, of, of the drillings. So she asked my wife, what do you want to see, what do you want to watch? And then she's telling us, you know, yesterday I had a client that was watch, asked me to put your videos while, while oh. I was treating him. You don't know what Hashem is doing with your prayers. You don't know what Hashem is doing with your effort. You don't know what Hashem is doing with your thoughts. You don't have no understanding how powerful you are when you give a good advice to a person. When you now meet a person in the street and he's struggling and you just give him some good advice, positive hope from your life experience. And you told him, don't worry, it will be okay, my brother, you will see. That's the way life goes, sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Don't give up, don't back off. Stand strong, I'll pray for you, I'll try to find something for you. And that's it, and you go, and you disappear from his life. When your intentions were pure, so the energy of that good message that you just gave him will affect his life immediately. 
and he will go and spread that positive light that you see planted inside of him and you can never imagine to which distance that good word that you told him right now will get. It can hold on in the world for a thousand years. It can go from one person to the next and he will cheer up another fa friend and that friend will make a phone call and that phone call will change the life of another third person and that third person got another whole thing that he's working on and thousands of people will be affected and you don't have no idea that it's all under your name that it's your Mary that is going and spreading words of hope and positive energy in the world and you're healing the world with your mind with your pure thoughts with your pure intentions Sending a text message to a friend. How are you doing, my friend? What's going on with you? Is there something new? Let me know. I'm praying for you. This simple word can change a life of a person. This simple text can save a person from committing suicide and you don't know how many lives you can save by just expressing the good that is treasured and installed inside your own heart by being who you are, allowing yourself to be sensitive, allowing yourself to be honest, allowing yourself to express the pure wave of your spirit, your generosity, to give compliments, to say I love you, to say I was thinking about you to cheer up people, to give hope to those pure souls that are waiting for a smile like every creation waits for oxygen, like water to a tired and broken spirit. You can save lives of people just by being a good messenger. To reveal godliness in the world, it's to reveal the godliness that you hold within. You don't need to be a man of God. You don't need to be a prophet. You don't need to have a, a, a website with thousands of followers. You need to be a simple person that is being honest and talking with dignity and with honor and respect and reaching for justice and for kindness to be revealed in the world. And you can never imagine in which path the Creator will lead you and will take you to an eternal success, to a wonderful, inspiring life of satisfaction and joy. You and all of your beloved ones with you. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.